Uh, and he used that to measure phenylalanine in blood, not for purposes of, be, of newborn screening at that time, for, but to uh, aid Dr. Warner in, moder in monitoring the diet for PKU. The second chance event that occurred in, in uh, Bob Guthrie's uh, uh, development of uh, newborn screening uh, was that one day he and his wife get a call from uh, Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, uh, where they were from, uh, informing them that his wife's niece, who was known to be mentally retarded, had just been diagnosed with PKU. And so this put PKU right in, basically, in his family and uh, s truly stimulated his interest in learning more about PKU and also possibly uh, uh, thinking about doing something about it. Now, so he began to learn more about PKU, asking some of his pediatric friends. Bob was a physician, but not a pediatrician, not a practicing physician, uh, and uh, also reading the literature. And one of the articles that he came upon was a uh, rather famous article uh, published in 1959 by two physicians in Denver, Colorado, uh, Horner and Streamer, uh, called phenylketonuria treated from earliest infancy. And what they said in that article was, A, that individuals born with PKU had an elevation of phenylalanine from the very first days onward. By the end of the first day, certainly by the second day, they had a distinct elevation of blood phenylalanine. And B, that if you put them on treatment in the neonatal period, that dietary treatment that Horace Bickle had uh, developed a number of years before, uh, you would prevent mental retardation. And they showed this in, in three cases uh, in their original report. The challenge now became how does one prevent mental retardation in all children born with PKU? Um, in the earlier studies, the one by Horn and Streamer and, and other studies that were beginning to appear similar to that at that time, uh, PKU was discovered in the newborn period in um, individuals born into families in which PKU was already known. Usually a sibling, a brother or sister was already known to be mentally retarded from PKU in the family. A, another a baby comes along in the family. They anticipate that baby may have PKU, test the baby specifically for blood phenylalanine. Uh, uh, levels uh, from the very first day onward and found that the baby had PKU or would rule out PKU in these new babies and these families. Um, that's how PKU was discovered uh, in those days. Uh, but that represented only about 20 percent of all the known individuals born with PKU because as, as an autosomal recessive disorder, we know that only about 20, 25 percent perhaps, but no more than that, have a family history of PKU. That left out uh, of early dietary treatment the uh, 80 percent of children who were born uh, into families in which PKU was never uh, even, uh, uh, was not known and certainly wasn't even uh, remotely uh, thought about. Uh, so how does one identify PKU in all babies with PKU. You can't identify babies with PKU on the basis of any clinical characteristic in the newborn period. As this slide shows, uh, babies with PKU look like all the rest of the babies uh, in the nursery. There are no clinical manifestations early on of PKU. The answer Bob Guthrie came up with was the Guthrie test. Um, Cons consisting really of two parts. The first part of the Guthrie test I'll show you in a moment. It's the bacterial assay of Guthrie, but uh, the second part was probably in, in even more important. That is the development of a simple filter paper dried blood specimen that could be obtained from the heel of the newborn, every newborn very simply, um, and could be uh, tested for PKU, for phenylalanine and PKU. Uh, and could be easily transported to a central laboratory. We know, all know this as the newborn screening uh, specimen. Uh, 